Sounds like you're signaling to me, we're ready to talk about this, right? As you can see, and I think this is really important for, for places where it's like, oh, I can just kind of think of this. The working out that you have is, is less important, right? But the reason why kind of, we're kind of sort of warming you up on this is that these are situations where you can think about it intuitively, but we want to give you these structures for the situations where you can't just think in your brain, like here's what it is. You need some working out to sort of provide a scaffold for your thinking, okay? So if you haven't already, please provide some working here. I'm talking about this new known condition, so I'm calling it K2 because I used K1 before. A six or seven is what you know. So again, I'm going to diagrammatically re represent that here. Now, we've looked at set notation, right? A little bit, yep. Yes, not at me, not at me, or, or shake at me. I just want to get something, okay, good, right? Remember set notation. So this idea before of talking about how the favorable events change. We actually have notation to represent this, right? What we're saying is our event, it's happening at the same time as this other known information. That's what this means, right? That's how that changes. So we have language, we have notation symbols, for when two things are happening and we want to consider them simultaneously, when there's an overlap between them. Does anyone remember which symbol would be appropriate here? Have a think, when two things overlap. We have a fancy word here that starts with an I. It's intersection, very good. So we've got this upside down curvy U looking thing, right? So what we're thinking about here is, well, how many ways, because I can't consider all the favorable events anymore, only some of them, right? How many ways can our favorable event overlap with the condition, right? And you can actually physically see it up here, okay? Which situation is the only one that actually matches? What would I, what would I actually write down here? Which events is, is it that I'm interested in? It's just the sevens, right? It's just the sevens, right? And I'm putting it in, in inverted commas because it's not a number, like this is how big it is. It's an event. It's the name of an event, like queen or ace, right? So I can say, what is my, uh, what is my size of my sample, my sample size? And what's my size of my favorable events? I'm going to write both of them, right? N of K2 is going to be, there's, there's eight, there's, there's four of these and four of these, right? So that's gonna be eight. I can also do the size of this new, this intersection, this overlap, right? It's starting to get a little bit thick with all of these symbols, but it's so much actually faster to write this than to say all of the language and words that go with describing this, right? We said that was four. There are only four sevens, right? So if when you wrote down your probability, I'm gonna write this as the probability of our event if we know, here comes that symbol, right, that this is the condition, then it should be just 4 over 8, which is, and I'm going to write that down. Whoops, that's an infinity sign, which is not what I wanted. 4 over 8, which is, of course, the half that very many of you got. So well done if you got there, okay? One more try. Let's have a look. And this time, I want to see if we can develop this in a generalized way, because these are all specific examples, okay? So part D, I think we're... a We've got a bit more of a handle on this, we can talk through it together, right? So part D says, now you have a look and you know it's not a three, four, seven, nine, or 10. Yeah, did I get the numbers right? Yeah. Yep, not three, four, seven, nine, or 10. So I'm going to change my sample space up here. So I'm knocking out three, four, seven, nine, and 10. I get it right? Okay, so what am I going to write down? Well, I'm going to introduce, I'm going to say, let's call this my new known information, right? I can say this in two ways. I can just say it the way they told me. It's not three, four, seven, nine, or 10. Or I could state it a little more positively, which might help, because I've stated everything positively on the board so far. So what are the actual options I have? Have a look up on the board. Ace, two, five, six. What have I got next? Eight's okay. And then all the court cards seem to be okay. Is that all right? Now the reason why it's actually helpful to write it like this is because it makes it a bit easier to calculate my new sample size. I just take all of these and I have to multiply by four because there are four suits, okay? So the size of my sample size is 32, very good. There are eight different kinds, each of which there are four of, okay? So that's my new sample size, that'll be on my denominator. Now when I think about the overlap, between my original, 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 favorable event, and my new sample space, have a look. What is the overlap between them? Which option's been crossed out that was also green before? Seven, eight, queen, ace, king, and jack. Seven, eight, queen, ace, ace? king, and jack. 
King and Jack. Okay, hold on a second. Wait a second. The favorable event right at the beginning. There's only, there's only one for this whole question. What did it include? Which ones? How did I mark it on the board? Seven. I marked it with the green stuff, right? So the seven and eight, I do want. But look at that seven. Do you see? I know that that can no longer be an option. So I'm sort of removing that from the running. Okay. It's really just the green ones that I have not eliminated. Eight, queen, ace. There's three of those, and how many of each of those do I have? Four. So I think this should be 12, right? Now, I'm just going to write that first. It's the eight, uh, the ace, and the queen. And so the number of those, like you just told me, should be 12, right? There's uh, how many eights and aces and queens are there in a deck? There, sh there should be 12, right? Assuming you've got a good deck. So now I can say, I can actually take and combine all this, right? The probability of my original favorable event, if you know, that's what that bar means, if you know, it's a bit too long, <laughs> that this is your condition is new favorable events divided by new sample space, 12 and 32. Uh, what is that? Common denominator, common factor of four? You can go beyond that, so three on eight, I believe. There we go, okay? So, let's formalize this. I'm going to now put this all in um, symbols, but we've actually got most of it here, to be honest. If you are considering, right, the probability of some kind of event, and you have some kind of known condition, some information that can be um, guaranteed, right, then the way that we would state this new fraction is, what are the things that actually go on here, right? Well, first we want the sample size. How is that restricted? That's the size of, well, your limited event, right? It's like, I know this, I know this. So I'm going to eliminate everything else that could have possibly happened, right? You work out that size. In this case, it was 32. And then what's the other number I need to work out? The intersection. Yeah. See this intersection here? This is the favorable event. I need to know what that is and then how many there are of that. And so that's why I say n. And the way I would write the intersection is e and k happening at the same time. Okay? Now what you'll find is this exact formula, more or less, you'll find it there just above the example we've been looking at. However, I, this is just a personal thing. If you like the way it's written there, that's fine. They use a's and b's instead of e's and k's. It's just a... It's just a visual difference. I don't like A and B though, because when I learned this, I could never remember which one was A and which one was B. They just didn't mean anything to me. Whereas E is the event that you're really focusing on. If you wanted, you could call it F for favorable, right? Whereas I put K for, this is something you know. You know this to be true. You've seen it. So hopefully that helps you distinguish which one is which. Make sense? Does anyone have any questions?